Peace family, thank you guys for joining the video for today. So we have some interesting stuff going on. Here we see Fed now allows third party processors to contact directly to Federal Reserve plus case agnostic Ripple partners as third party technology providers for Fed now. A lot of confusion with the Fed now service and all that stuff. Now, there is one thing to be said, guys, and I always have said that, that you can look it up. Like Falanti Technologies is a Ripple partner, right? And they work together with Ripple and they work together with the Fed now. So being connected, those two being connected officially, you can see that on the Ripple website. Knowing that Valenti is also connected to the Fed now, we understand that this service that the Fed now is presenting is actually through Ripple. Here you can see Fed Valenti Technologies, right? And there's many more BNY Mellon, uh, CGI. There is a lot of Ripple partners here as well, working together with the Fed now. So the thing is here, this is going, they were saying that this is going live July. There are rumors that this is being pushed back to June, as I have heard right now. I am not sure. This is not official source. This is not true. I do not know. But these are the rumors. This is what has been going around. I do not know if it's true or not. I will keep you updated if that is really the case. But as for now, July, this will go live. Real time settlements within the USA Fed now payment service right used paypal for first time what a horrible experience they will lock funds for up to 21 days and there's nothing you or sender can do to unlock it through their platform now this is also a reason guys why those kind of those sub intermediaries kind of money sending applications will not work and this is why right this is not the first time we have heard this story we have revolut which is doing the same thing holding your funds locking them for a month or two months we're talking about someone's funds who needs it and they will lock it for apparent no reason and they do this and it's quite common and like this cannot happen when you have xrp in your own wallet think about that right imagine you have a sum wallet and you want to make a payment or you want to keep your funds there there is no one that can actually intervene with your wallet because it's your wallet if it's not your keys, it's not your wallet. It's that simple. And the reason that Web3 will gain popularity in the future, guys, is because of these things. Because you have your wallet in your browser, for example, or, you know, in your phone and it's safe. No one can really get into it unless you download some kind of malware or something that will harm or intervene your, your cell phone or something like that. But that's that's on you, right? You have to make sure that you keep the security up to date and not being vulnerable for such things. But as you can see, these things are going around more and more right now with PayPal and Revolut and all these payment providers which hold funds from people. And that's really not okay. Like there is no occasion that you can just put someone's money away for 21 days or less it doesn't even matter right it's it's unthinkable tell me you've never held xrp without telling you announces plan to utilize one billion of dollar of cash reserves for company expansion now we know that ripple is really one of the healthiest com companies out there in the crypto industry because in this bear market they have so much money to spare and they can go beyond expansions and that is why we are super bullish on Ripple long term. This guy is making some really good videos, guys. I want to show you and share with you. The future of blockchain will utilize cross-chain bridges and carefully designed interoperability layers. Cross-chain functionality will become a requirement for institutional and enterprise mass adoption. Absolutely true, guys. And this is already happening, right? Crypto is really piquing the interest of these institutional kind of players because they understand what is possible with blockchain right many people common people will see look at crypto and think that it's dangerous and it's not really anything that will give a breakthrough but guys i can tell you being and using web3 every day myself i can tell you guys that there is things going on right now that are going to refute refu 
that will revolutionize everything, right? And many people cannot see that, but it's already happening. Let's take a look at this video, guys, where you can see papers, PDFs, where institutional mass adoption is coming. As always, dropping gems for you all. Today, we're going to be talking about XDC, the XDC network, mentioning key vocab, interoperability, digital islands, and bridges. Pay attention. This is directly from the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce. They go on to say... Blockchain has generated a lot of interest in the banking sector, but again, adoption has been slow and is not widespread due to high subscription and integration costs. However, with very few trade finance blockchain solutions out there, pay attention, very few trade finance and blockchain solutions out there. Now let's go over here to a PDF straight from the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce, reconceiving the global trade finance ecosystem. What do they go on to say in their PDF? An interoperability layer, hmm, which layer is that going to be? would help to foster collaboration among existing and new entities, thereby avoiding the proliferation of digital islands. Check this out from the same exact PDF. We come down here and it says, Uniform trade finance data models. The trade ecosystem would benefit from harmonization of all data sets pertaining to trade finance transactions with the end goal of increased visibility and transparency. A unified data model would act as a bridge between ecosystems allowing for contextualization of data sources across multiple services. Check this out. This is straight from the xdc.org website. Again, digital islands, interoperability, and bridges all being mentioned. Since the introduction of blockchain technology, various protocols and DLT platforms have proliferated, each working within its own individual ecosystem. As such, it became imperative for those digital islands to interact with each other. Cross-chain bridges enable interoperability between different networks, thereby enhancing scalability of blockchain use. Again, remember, what platform are they going to be utilizing? R3's Corda platform is a permission peer-to-peer -peer DLT developed by over 80 of the world's largest financial institutions. Hmm, what is R3 Corda's bridge? Which provides interoperability between a public blockchain and private DLT Core DAP, acting as a settlement vehicle for contracts and agreements that can be processed within seconds via the use of digital assets such as stable coins or xdc let's go over here back to the xdc.org website it says the future of blockchain will utilize cross-chain bridges the xdc network was specifically built for enterprise applications and the necessity for public and private network cross functionality is inherent in its infrastructure Again, pay attention to detail. To achieve adoption across institutional entities, including those that require a bridge to a private chain or other subnetwork, cross-chain functionalities will become a requirement for enterprise mass adoption. That is absolutely massive. And the XDC network is already a proven network and stands ready to scale with demand. Boom. So what this guy is doing, guys, and you can see this across all these PDFs or big papers that these companies or institutions are providing, right? You can see that they use the same language. And this is actually how we found that Ripple and XRP will be the future of payments, right? Because they use the same language, interoperability, internet of value, cross-chain bridges, all these things, all these 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 terms guys they use the same language because they're going to use the actual uh, blockchain or dlt platform right they understand what it means and this was the same with ripple and here we can see at ripple we are building solutions that move value instantly inexpensively and reliably now ask yourself with that video you just saw with that guy making all the connections and this is related to xdc right you can see guys that everything that is going to be happening there is payments and of course they're not going to use ethereum or anything else when we are talking about trade finance xdc and all that stuff they're going to use xrp to make payments because that's what it's made for at ripple we focus on building breakthrough crypto solutions for a world without economic borders the first problem that we started working on from the onset is how do we really use crypto and blockchain to build breakthrough solutions, starting with cross-border payments. In talking to our customers and also as an immigrant, uh, I understand the unmet customer needs when it comes to moving value throughout the world. In, in today's world, it takes 
several days. It's expensive and it's highly unreliable when it comes to sending money throughout the world compared to if you want to send an email or a tax. Now, the key thing here is to take guys, it's unreliable, right? Unreliable meaning there is no record. There is no, not like on the blockchain, on the, on the distributed ledger, there is no receipt for every transaction that you make. It's not the same as with banking as what you have with blockchain. It's there permanent, permanently, right? And that is what's key guys. So I hope you're paying attention guys, because we are moving closer and closer to the end of this lawsuit. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Cheers.